What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gershwan. And once again, we're back at it to answer more questions in another installment of For the Greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. But question in front of your question goes get those questions first. first. And that is what? Oh, also, we have super thanks. If you guys want to support the channel, if you enjoy us talking and you guys listening while you paint, you go to work, you do something, uh, consider supporting us with a super thanks. If you do, you can ask anything you want and we'll answer it in a full video next week. And uh, we got a question by Oscar1950. He asks, what is the most interesting or coolest campaigns in the 40k universe? So that's pretty interesting because that goes back a long time. So there's a lot of awesome campaigns to pull from. But in my opinion, I got to go with something nostalgic, and it's the Damocles campaign. Yeah. This one pitted the Tau against the, well, I guess it was the Imperium in general, Space Marines and the Astra Militarum. And it was really cool because you also saw a bunch of battlesuits being used, and these were all prototypes, and that meant Forge World models. So we got those awesome, sleek Forge World Tau battlesuits in there, and it was just a very tough campaign until the Imperium was like, all right, let's get serious. Yeah. <laughs> and they like wiped the floor with the Tau. And the Tyranids came in and they're like, whoa, we need to... Yeah, we need to leave. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it was a stalemate, which shouldn't have been a stalemate. And then the Imperium was winning. And then the Tyranids came in, so the Imperium pulled back. And then the Tal was like, yeah, we won. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really cool story. And it introduces a new faction or it introduced a new faction to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, when I think of this like question, I also think of like the tabletop, like tabletop wise, like what was most exciting and um for me it's armageddon so yes. like the third war for armageddon where god school magor thraka invades uh, armageddon again and then you have the battle between him and um good old yark um you have uh this is basically just the epicness of the scale of fighting on an entire planet and the lore the lore was super thick um we uh <coughs> we started playing around that time yes so we started playing when we saw the Armageddon books, but more importantly, it was Apocalypse Codexes, and that was the introduction of huge uh, creatures uh, that eventually, like, slowly... So, like, the campaigns back then lasted forever. Yes, a long time. I remember the Armageddon thing was a thing for uh, at least a couple of years, uh, so much so that um, GW started uh, putting out a Stampa for the orcs, mm -hmm. which is only a Forge World thing, um, around this, like, still, while well, the thing was still going on, and we were already kind of old. Yeah. Um, the cool thing, too, about Armageddon is that it made us realize that, oh, yeah, you can go to Forge World, which is a com like an offshoot of GW, GW. Uh, to buy, like, these, like, cool, epic um, models and stuff. Um, and back then, it wasn't that big of, or it wasn't as big as today, because now you have the, the Horus Heresy series. Yes. Um, but yeah, for me, Armageddon. Yeah. It's, there's been a ton more, and there's a bunch of epic ones recently, such as, I guess you can call the uh, Arcs of Omen. That's its own campaign. That's pretty awesome, since it's pushing the narrative forward, and it's introducing demigods and maybe Primarchs and stuff like that. So let us know what your favorite is. Um, maybe some going all the way back to the Rogue Trader days. Yeah. This next question comes from Just Oscar. Is it a bad thing that GW focuses too much on humanity? If so, what would you suggest to balance out the representation of other factions? So I think um, it's inevitable that uh, GW is going to focus on humanity because that's what people buy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't even know if it's because, like, I think it's, like, one of those, like, cyclical things where, like, GW produces more of this stuff because more people buy it, but more people buy it because GW produces that's, more yeah. of that stuff. Because, I mean, let's face it, like... Uh, space Marines inside of a Space Marine, and Space Marines inside of a Space Marine inside of Space Marines is a lot. Yeah, but like, Centurions were just a bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but then after that, they were like, you know what would make a Space Marine even better? If you make them up an even, like you make a Space Marine Space Marine. <laughs> yeah. Primaris. Primaris, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that, is it wrong? Um, it's annoying. For sure. Yeah, especially when you're playing like one of those factions that don't really get that much models or rules and stuff like that, such as the Aldar. The Aldar have been around for a long time, and they're a vastly different aesthetic than mm -hmm. like the Space Marines, where they're like space elves and stuff like that. Right. And it's really sucked because for the longest time, if you wanted to use all the models in the Aldar line, you had to use metal models. Yep. 
and some models didn't even exist, while you have redundancy for the space marines. So that's that's what kind of sucks. Um, and if you are trying to be like, quote unquote, that hipster that doesn't play the best thing or the newest thing, then you kind of do end up paying for it. Yeah. Um, and how would we fix it? I think lore wise um, or like tabletop wise is uh, GW should produce more of these like um, the starter collecting boxes. Yeah. Uh, but instead of starting collect like the what are the ones that boost your collection? They're just collection. Yeah, they got like different battle- ones. Um they got like the uh, was it combat patrols. There you go. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Like if com- <coughs> excuse me, if combat patrols were two factions. Yeah, uh, but then they'd be a little bit more in price, which yeah, would mean less accessible. Or bring back the number of um, models that you get per. Like you're still getting the same amount of models per mm-hmm. the price, but you're just getting some of one of one faction and some of the other. Um, but also that gives you the opportunity because I remember in Kill Team, with Kill Team you would buy a box and it came with a little book and the book had a story for that Kill Team. Right. Um, do that, but instead of doing a one single unit, you're doing two units that are fighting each other and then you give a little bit of fluff between like two Xeno factions that are fighting. I think that would be really interesting, but we do kind of already see that with like the start collect, or not the start collecting, the starter kits for every edition. So we'll have one with, like, the Necrons and the Space Marines. We'll have one with, like, the Tyranids and the Space Marines. It'd be interesting to have one without Space Marines. Because we all know Space Marines are going to get their own release, their own models, codices, and stuff like that. So just let the Xenos, or at least the lesser played armies, kind of shine, get their time in the light, maybe bring in new people to play those armies so then they could start getting the ball rolling for more models, more books, more campaigns with these other races. Yeah, and as I've gotten older, the more I realize that GW is screwing us over. Because, like, so they're not doing this. They're not giving um, adequate, like... Support. Uh, support, yeah, to these Xeno factions. But they tempt you with buying these Xeno factions, like they did with the Leagues of Voltan. Yes. We're probably not going to get any updates to the Leagues of Voltan for a really long time, which means that if you purchased an army and you're, like... Like we were when we were kids, we're like, we don't have enough money to buy like multiple factions or to keep up with stuff. Um, You're stuck playing that army that is not going to get updated for years. Mm -hmm. So, um, and GW is smart for doing that because, you know, if you're poor, you're screwed, like whatever, (laughs) you're not going to buy our stuff anyways. Right. But if you are like people our age, where now we got like that money. um, Quote unquote disposable income. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. now we can say, okay, so I bought Leagues of Voltan, I'm playing it, but there's shit. The Eldar just came out with something new. Let me jump over there mm-hmm. um, just to make it fun. And GW make, like profits off of that. They profit off of getting you on the hook kind of yes. thing. And it's not even like, and I don't even know why it's, um, it just seems like a bad practice. I don't know why. Yeah. And then you have these price hikes every other like, yeah. six months, it seems. And, it's, and when you look at other... Um, things like you look at like magic the gathering and stuff it's not like they're supporting red all the time no or it, like yeah. everything gets supported equally mm-hmm. the issue is just it's just set after set after set yeah so it's like oh i'm barely getting into the lore and the cards of this whole set and they're already bombarding you with previews of the next one yeah which is kind of what 40k does now yeah yeah it's like oh look at this campaign book oh wait before you even read this one this next one's coming out next month but before you pre-order this one you got to pre-order this one too so it's like never ending yeah the big difference too is like price wise right like you're buying little cards whereas with um 40k you're buying like super expensive like 200 dollar sets that are only like a quarter of your army yeah so with that being said it's like you can spend less and buy more with magic but with 40k it's like you're spending a lot to get a little yeah, and it's like one of those games that's like super time consuming because you have to build, paint, and do all that kind of stuff. Not just that you got to find somebody else that has done all that. Yeah, <laughs> this um, this uh, particular greater wog is very heavy on like the tabletop, mm-hmm. uh, and I have a feeling that the majority of our viewers are just kind of into it. Um, they stopped playing just like we did, yeah. and they're into more of the lore. So sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but the lore of it all is. Read books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is another topic that we talked about in another, uh, mm-hmm. or I think we were just talking about it, right? That like, Yeah, we weren't recording it or anything. That GW right now is investing a lot of uh, effort into Black Library mm-hmm. because Black Li- Library is bringing in new eyes and, and ears to the universe of 40K. And eventually it's going to be like 
forget the tabletop it was once the tabletop mm-hmm. but now it's more of like a it's a universe in and it's a, in and of itself yeah i think they're also focusing on the story of 40k because they're also going to be needing these stories to make a live action cinematic universe yeah um in the future so like in i don't know 2050 <laughs> i hope uh 40k is like the same as like i don't know i wouldn't say the star wars universe because the star wars universe had a huge boom yeah but um, i was gonna say marvel but even then like well like it would be nice to be as as big as marvel because marvel was like it was still kind of nerdy and stuff yeah but i feel like anything that was nerdy is now considered cool nowadays yeah because people are just stuck at home and want to paint their miniatures and not go out and socialize which is okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) because of quarantine (laughs) um yeah We'll see what happens mm-hmm. with the cinematic universe, with GW focusing on humanity, uh, and and hopefully the same thing that happened to Dune doesn't happen to 40K if they do come out with a uh, yeah. movie, because I feel like Dune. Sure, I watched the second one, but it's not like I was hooked and I was like, <laughs> I want to learn everything about Dune now. Yeah. And even if you were, I feel like three years is too big of a gap. Yeah. It's like, oh, I watched it. How long ago? Do I even want to watch the second one? Yeah. What even happened in the first? That's why it shouldn't be a... I feel like it shouldn't be a movie. It should be a show. Well, yeah. I feel like they'll do both. Yeah. They'll have movies. They'll have shows. Um, kind of like what they're doing with uh, Warhammer Plus. Yeah. Animations and stuff like that. But they'll suck. <laughs> Hopefully they're better. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, Those were the questions for today because we rambled for a little bit too long. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with us. If you have more questions for us, please comment down below and we'll talk tomorrow. That's right. It's been the Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out. <laughs>